Black holes, where time and space converge under gravity's immutable power. These extremes of nature, once considered improbable, are now giving up their secrets. In fact, scientists have been able to imagine the impossible, the black hole at the center of our galaxy. We can now peer into the abyss. The concept of black holes was first proposed by the German astronomer and physicist Karl Schwarzschild, barely a year after Albert Einstein had published his works on the field equations of gravitation in 1915. Schwarzschild wrote to Einstein from the German trenches of the First World War, detailing his mathematical results of his gravitational equations. Sadly, the brilliant scientist later succumbed to a skin disease he contracted in the trenches at the age of 42. The existence of these so-called frozen stars was written about and debated for 50 years. In 1967, physicist John Wheeler coined the term black hole to describe these impossible objects and the conditions that would create them. New Zealander Roy Kerr advanced the concept by publishing a solution to the equations which would require that black holes spin like all other astronomical bodies. Then Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose theorized that black holes could emit radiation, now called Hawking radiation. The theory, if a black hole had no material to absorb and grow, then a black hole could evaporate, effectively shrink and die. All scientists had to do was find one to study. Quasars, the tremendously bright, distant objects, were factored in as a strong case for black hole accretion, the only imaginable energy source capable of such incredible luminosity. In 1964, astronomers discovered one of the brightest X-ray sources in the sky, in the constellation Cygnus, and labeled Cygnus X1. The powerful source didn't coincide with any bright optical or radio source, leaving it in the mystery basket of observations. Before long, with advancements in computers and space-based telescopes like Hubble, black holes were eventually detected, or their effect on their surrounds were detected, as black holes by their nature can't be seen. Black holes are these incredibly fascinating uh, but mysterious objects. We know they sit at the hearts of galaxies and they drive how those galaxies grow and how those galaxies die. They swallow gas and stars up. They're also these incredibly enigmatic and mysterious objects that live at the boundary between our two great theories of, of physics, general relativity, which describes gravity, and quantum mechanics, which describes the smallest things in the world. Black holes are literally gravity run amok. They are purely gravitational objects predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, and their most notable and terrifying feature is that things go in and they never come back out. Wonder comes to my mind first. Such objects were never expected. Uh, to exist in nature until very recently. As a matter of fact, I was a complete skeptic about black holes as recently as uh, 20 years ago. Black holes are places where Einstein's theory of general relativity is the whole story, not merely a perturbation on top of Newton's theory, which explains the dynamics of planets in our solar system. As a result, black holes provide a unique environment in which to probe general relativity specifically and strong gravity generally and its implications across the cosmos. If you want to make a test of the fundamental theories of the universe, you want to go to the most extreme laboratories in the universe, and a black hole is that. Seeing a black hole actually allows us to not only know they exist, and not only know an event horizon exists, 
It also allows us to test some of the very basic predictions of the theory of general relativity of Albert Einstein, which really describes space and time uh, in its completeness. And that has never been tested before. If you like Einstein's theory of gravity, then black holes are, you know, one of the most uh, interesting examples of this theory. And this is my, my role within the, this project. I, I am a theorist, I work with you know, equations and uh, simulations, and um, my, my role is that to try and understand whether the image that we produce corresponds to the predictions of Einstein's theory or maybe to something else. From the physics side, I find that more an interesting question, that this is basically some kind of rent or tear maybe in space-time and a place where we don't understand the physics and have a lot of serious questions about information theory. I was very excited the first time I saw the first image. Uh, for a long time this was purely theoretical. Uh, we, we were predicting uh, that we would see certain features in the image, uh, but we didn't really know was it really there. Uh, and now we know, and it was exciting that all of that uncertainty collapsed in that moment. So as the magnetized gas is falling onto the black hole, it heats up and therefore generates the light that we then see. Now from our daily experience, we expect that light travels on straight paths and straight trajectories. We call them rays. Uh, here the situation is very different. We have a black hole sitting right there. So what the black hole is doing, it is deflecting and bending the light rays away from the straight paths that, um, that we understand in our daily life. And in fact, it can be so strong that we can see things that are behind the black hole that we thought are obstructed by it, just because the black hole is bending the light rays into our line of sight. Scientists began running simulations on supercomputers. Multiple computational models were visualized to better understand what they might find in the data collected from their observations. After we computed the radiative signature of our simulations, we have to compare them to the observations. And this can be imagined as you are in a, in a stadium in a, during a football match and you have an image. And you want to figure out if this person or whatever is on this image is among the spectators in the stadium. So what you do is you take this image and try to match it with all the 60,000 spectators in the stadium and you do this while you rotate it, you scale it, you increase the contrast, and you try to figure out first what is on your image. Is it a person, is it a cat or whatever? And try to match this to the spectators. And this seems trivial, but it's not. It's a highly computational uh, demanding process. So we need a supercomputer, which we have in Frankfurt. And we developed a so-called genetic algorithm, which is a very smart way running through these images and try to adjust them. And this takes roughly a month. And after this calculation time, we have maybe 10 of those spectators which match your image. And this is very similar to what we do in the EHD. So we try to compare and match our observations with the theoretical predictions. So what, what is most surprising of, of this experience is that we managed to get a very good image the first time we tried to synchronize all of these telescopes at the same time. It is not so surprising that we obtained the image that we had predicted through simulations because while we believe our simulations are correct and because we believe that the theory of Einstein's general relativity is the correct one. In 2019, they achieved their result, an image of the shadow of a massive black hole in the distant M87 galaxy. It was a world-first achievement celebrated around the globe. I think we've been extremely lucky. I'd expected that we have to work for years and years, do many observations until we get a final image. And then we look at our first source and we see that ring. We see the event horizon and we see that shadow, that dark region. 
and you know immediately we are looking at an event horizon at a black hole from all sides at once in this, this thing. We see at a region where time stops. This is a very different part of the universe that we're seeing for the very first time. We want you to take an image of a black hole and the problem with black holes is that they are very small. So you want to take a very big black hole, which unfortunately is very far away from us. And so you need a big telescope. This telescope is 100 meter in diameter, but it's not enough. You want a bigger telescope, and of course it's impossible to build, but you can create a virtual telescope by joining different telescopes in different locations. And so you can build a telescope which is as big as the, are, the Earth. And in fact, that's exactly what we've done. We've, we joined telescope like this with telescope in the United States and one even in the South Pole to get a very sharp image. An image that is comparable to seeing an orange on the moon. Black holes tell you that there are regions inside them that cannot be explored. And for, for a physicist, this is uh, very disturbing and attractive at the same time because, you know, we don't like to have doors which we cannot cross. And in particular, inside black holes, physics is even expected to, to fail completely. And so this even adds fascination to, to these objects. The future of the project uh, will hopefully going towards a new understanding of more fundamental questions in physics. If this is true that black holes are the extreme objects where we can study gravity and we know that um, general relativity which describes black holes in the outer part up to the event horizon breaks down at the event horizon. So the big hope is um, that with more data we might be able to study the physics beyond general relativity. So maybe there might be quantum physics ruling beyond the event horizon or the combination of quantum physics and general relativity, which would be the theory of quantum gravity, which is non-existent at the moment, but we might learn more about this with the help of studying black holes. Our experiments are like an Arctic expedition. We have to plan for months and months and months in advance, gather our equipment, and then we have this great migration of people to observatories all around the world. We stay up all night, uh, we run our telescopes, and then we have this terrible period of waiting where we don't know if it's all worked. We send all of our data together, and only when it's truly combined do we know if it's worked. And then the even harder part begins of analyzing that data and being very, very careful, doing all the checks and balances to know that we got it right. Data analysis, imaging black holes and doing simulations is very exciting. It's also very difficult and requires a lot of patience. It's a very long process, but seeing the final product is very satisfying. The Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration is this amazing group of fantastic people from all around the world. Americans, Europeans, people from Asia, who've come together with all their technical expertise and scientific expertise to make this image of a ring around the black hole. The future of this project is amazing because now that we've seen what we're after, we have so many more questions to ask about it, to push into the regime of can we decide, is Einstein right? Can we study how gas really gets swallowed by the black hole? Can we see a giant eruption uh, of, uh, of radiation, of particles coming out of the system? So many things to do, we've really only just begun. Now we want to make the first movie. Now we want to understand how space-time rotates around the black hole. We'll do that by putting more telescopes around the world to make our virtual lens even better. It was a, a, a fantastic way of combining talents from different people in a way that otherwise would have not been possible. In order to, to, to take this picture, you need the cooperation, the simultaneous observations of many radio telescopes across the planet. You need to have the largest possible network of telescopes taking the same image at the same time.
New goals for the Event Horizon Telescope were quickly set. The M87 massive black hole is far away from Earth. Scientists wanted to get a closer look and decided to image another black hole at the center of a galaxy, one much closer but also much smaller and shrouded in gas and dust. So if you try to look into the center of galaxies, it's usually blocked from view by dust and other stuff. In the radio, you can look through, like here today, we can look through rain, you can look through clouds, and so we can look through dust. And with combining radio telescopes like this together with other telescopes in the world, you can peer right into the center of the galaxy and see this black hole. It's, uh... The science result is no, it's just one point in time in the project and, and we are always learning more about how the instrument works, how people work, uh, how new theories come about and so this is an evolution in my perspective. It's not just one point in time where you say this is it, that's done, uh, it always continues. So we still have a lot of mysteries to be solved, you know, problems to be tackled. There are still many questions about black holes so I would like to study further in the black holes. The Event Horizon Telescope targeted the black hole in Sagittarius A, which is the location of the center of our very own Milky Way galaxy. The long-term future of experiments like the Event Horizon Telescope is moving this kind of instrument into space and starting imaging black holes from space, which uh, improves a lot this kind of observation because it allows us to have even higher angular resolution than what we have now. So we will be able maybe in a 20 years, 30 years, make a very accurate images of the event horizon of a black hole. Not only did scientists image the black hole, they sampled the radio emissions from the surrounding hot gases, giving us an audio impression, the sounds of a black hole. So far we've been looking at the closest massive black hole, but quasars are very distant from us. Uh, with gravity we can see the motion of gas and resolve the sizes of these regions and thereby measure then the mass precisely. So if you can do this for many, many quasars, many distant objects, then you can uh, solve perhaps the riddle how massive black holes played a role in the evolution of galaxies. We now know that basically every galaxy has at its center a, a massive black hole of different masses. We'd like to understand that in detail. There is, a, if you like, a symbiosis between these black holes and galaxies, and we need to understand that in order to understand the evolution of the universe. Studying the data from the Event Horizon Telescope continues to reveal more detail 
in this case X-ray emissions, reveal magnetic lines of force through the orbiting gas clouds. Further study of the X-ray emissions is currently underway with a new space-based X-ray observatory. The Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, or XP. Launched in 2021, XP is designed to observe extreme cosmic objects like pulsars, neutron stars and black holes. This satellite is able to study X-ray radiation, which is polarized or oscillating in a particular direction. This reveals more detail of the physics of these high temperature environments, particularly around black holes. But there are two other parameters that we could look at if we only had the tools to do that. And those have to do with the polarization, the degree of polarization and the position angle, the angle associated with the polarization. So by doing this mission, we're opening up two more degrees of freedom to be able to try to understand how are the X-rays produced? What are the models? We have to be able to predict the polarization that we will turn out to measure. So it's really exciting. Our science working group has studied all, we have seven different teams of studying different classes. So for example, the, the radio pulsars, supernova remnants, et cetera. And so we have, we're gonna be looking at seven different classes and several examples of those classes so that we get a good preliminary survey of what polarization is out there. environments created by black holes are an opportunity to study many other phenomena. Neutrinos, the most abundant particles in the universe, have almost no mass and very rarely interact with matter. They seem to be generated in extreme objects like exploding stars and the fast particle jets ejected by supermassive black holes. Colliding black holes are another event closely watched as they generate gravity waves that ripple through space-time and can be detected here on Earth. Another recent event detected was the flipping of the magnetic field surrounding a massive black hole. The reversing polarity caused the visual brightening of the material surrounding the black hole and the reduction of its X-ray emissions. During this time, the X-ray corona disappeared and only when the flipped magnetic field gained strength did the X-ray's emissions recover. Another black hole has been observed devouring a star that wandered too close. The ejected superfast jets of material interacting with nearby dust clouds and aiding to form planets within the material. These singularities appear to be an intrinsic part of both the destruction and creation of stars and planets. While we don't have all the answers, discoveries like this one set us on a path to understanding more about the universe.